So where we left off yesterday uh, was that we got our Alley Chat set up so that it was drawing our channels and our users and our OAuth tokens from the database coming through our Web API resource server. So right now I have the identity server and the resource server running. And so now when I run this, it says local server is running. Now we can say, is this working? It doesn't look like it ever retrieved data correctly from the, oh, there it is. <clears throat> Cannot access a disposed socket. So at some point, hmm, it's interesting. I don't think it let me logged on as liver dev trying twice, but it definitely let me do it as alley chat. So that's a great little bug to catch. Let's try it again. Try it again. We need to get the identity server running and then also the console app. <coughs> okay. There it is running. There it is, it joined. All right, so that one is not happy. So one of them is not happy here. Let's see why. When I look here at program, when you are connecting here, it's inside of this BLL aw chat, right? I wonder if you have something here. I think I could probably do like a Twitch client dot on disconnected. And let's just do something here like console dot write line here. And we're gonna look for e dot username. Oh, that's of the bot. Mm. was disconnected. Taking it easy, living high. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. We want to do the resource server. Come on, come on. And then also we want to do the identity server. On this life of his dream. I gotta get some more coffee in a second. <clears throat> Liver dev trying was disconnected. And so the reason for that is because you're already currently logged into chat, maybe? Or is it that you don't have an OAuth token associated with it? Why don't we go ahead and we're going to strip these. Let's go ahead and delete this one here. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna re-scaffold my database so that way it's empty and then we can run through the whole thing. You probably need to get a new OAuth token each time. No. Whoops, you have this a little funny, don't you? It's this one is your startup project, and then over in the package manager console, your domain. <clears throat> I 
and we're going to do an update database. Let me get some coffee, one second. All right, I'm back. I got the new mic on order, by the way. This shotgun mic I'm setting up here should be just out of view, and it should help a lot with the sound that we're hearing. Okay, so it ran the scene method. Everything looks good. So now if I run my MVC as the startup, we're going to need all of them this time. There's one. We need the web API. We need the resource server. And that's where we're at. Okay, here's the MVC. When we log in, you can say that we're going to log in with Twitch. It's going to authorize me in. All at once is my email address. Perfect. It's going to get my user ID here, create the account. Looks like everything is good. And there we are, and we're logged in. So now when I come over to Twitch, currently have no registered accounts. So we're going to register for me. This time it's asking for my chat messages. Perfect. So my callback doesn't send me anywhere. And now when I run in here, I should have my bot able to connect to Liver Dev Trine. There it is. Okay. And so now if we want to get it so that we're also in control of Alley Chat, then crap, I didn't mean to do that. Just a second. So I think what we need to do there is that if we get a different OAuth token, we need to reauthorize that user. Probably. That wouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our alley chat. Not this one. And now let me put this on for a second. Okay. Oops, not that one. This one. Here we are. Do we want to authorize it? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. And then if we take a look back here at my callback, you can see we have Alley Chat. And if I run the chat, and there it is. And you can see I'm going to say hello. Now I'm in as both users. You can see that's coming in here. And at, for each one of the accounts, and I can say hello, I am also in both channels. And there it is. So let's set up our channels, okay? 
Well, we have to do some kind of a polling, right? So over here on the account or on this program, let's set up a poll. So how are we gonna do that? Just give me a second. So we're gonna do a private static timer polling time, timer polling. And there's two choices. We could use that asynchronous one or we could use the system threading. System threading is fine for me right now. So here, after you connect, instead of doing this one, you're gonna to need to do a timer polling equals a new timer. And we need this to have the callback. Oh, callback. I want systems, not timers, sorry. And my interval that we want this thing to check at will be like every 10 seconds. We need to subscribe the event. Like that. And then we want to start it. But down here on your application exit, you want to make sure that you are also, if my timer polling does not equal to null, then you want to set it to null. Good morning there, Serializer. How are you doing today? Okay. So up here on my polling timer tick, these two go above. So this one you want to get all of your routeds, right? For each routed in there. Now you want to do a if my routed dot twitch user dot twitch user ID. Okay, so if my BLL's alley chat dot any S where my S dot Interesting. <clears throat> when you look at this, you should have this Credentials here. Where does this have a reference to? Right there, Twitch routed view model. So it's here. If there's any s dot Twitch routed, so it's just not exposed. channels joined, Twitch channel view model. It's not a collection, is it? It's just that one, Twitch routed view model, Twitch routed channel. So when I drop back down here, it's called Twitch routed, right? Channels join, channels join. So it's just this. Rotched, routed, and there's gonna be a get. Oh my gods, I hate my sound card. I have no sound and continuously reboot it. Oh man, is it a laptop or a desktop? And now we have to make sure that this is in the interface. Twitch routed dot twitch user dot ID is equal to that. 
So if that is not currently in there, then what you want to do is make a new one and then add it. So every 10 seconds, this should tick and add it. So let's try it. Remember that here in main now, I shouldn't have this. Let's try it out. Resource. Identity. And then also the chat. Interesting. Okay, I'm currently in his liberty of trying. It looks like that it didn't. Okay, so when it got disconnected here. On join channel on disconnected. Try that. So Web API. Okay, also the identity server and then the service. There it is, so now it's working. Wait for it. Okay. So the other thing that this needs to do in this poll and this create here is anywhere for each var BLL, uh, we're just gonna say client and BLL all Ali chat. What we have to do is if there isn't a routeds dot any, I'm sorry, routed my routed twitches dot any. So if there's not anywhere, my s dot Twitch user dot ID is equal to client dot twitch routed dot twitch user dot ID. Then you want to remove it. BLL Ali chat dot remove client. Yeah. There you go, serialized. Now I got sound. Also, we're up on that Discord, I think. So that looks pretty good. So now what we want to do is we want to add our channels into it. So when I come back over here into my modules for my alley chat data access layer and library, pardon me, this one's inside of my domain lib. The first thing I want to look at is here inside of my Twitch when we have our Twitch routers. Now we have this channels that we're going to be bringing in here, which is going to be a channel ID, right? So it's this right here. So we need to create views for this one, right? So I think the easiest thing to do would be to come here into the controller in my area under alley chat under views. You currently already have this thing called a Twitch controller and a providers controller. You could probably get rid of providers because we don't actually need those here at all. That was a bad call. 
But what we do need now is we need channels. So we're going to add one here. So this is called a Twitch routed channel controller. So we didn't actually finish these, did we? We got close. We have an index, we have a delete. We probably need to have a details, right? So what's the easiest way to do this? I'm gonna open this folder up here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these. I'm gonna say that this one is gonna be a widget uh, details. We can say that this one's gonna be a widget edit. And then we also need to have a widget delete. Same thing here, create. I'm sorry, this one's gonna be a details. This one will be an update. Yeah, don't worry about that. Oops, sorry, this one's gonna be a edit. And then we need a delete. Let's add these in here. So we add an existing item. And it's here in my views. Oops, sorry. It's here in my areas under my alley chat, under my views for my Twitch routed chan, this one. And we want everything except for my create and my index. There we go. So when I look here at widget create, register Twitch accounts, accounts. Register Twitch account. Oh no, you were right before, like that. Okay, so here it says create a Twitch account and you're just gonna add a username and a... Let's see, you're actually never even hitting this, are you? So you can delete this one. I think you have to have this create. That's fine. And so now under details, this one is gonna say register Twitch accounts, and this one's going to say, not create Twitch account, it's going to say uh, details. You know what, we don't even need this stuff, do we? I'm fine with the index in there. We also need to have a delete though. We don't need to have an edit. We do want to have a details. So it should be easier to, if we change this thing to be like details too, we're going to scaffold it. So we're going to add a new view and we want to scaffold out from my, this one's going to be a details, right? And this is going to be from my, interesting. It's not of a Twitch user, it's of a... Accounts Twitch, Twitch account? Twitch routed. Is it of Twitch routed? Let me double check that. Mm -mm. See, it's not this one. It's definitely going to be... Well, it could be that one. Hold on. It's not. So here under my domain, if I look at my lib under Alley Chat, it's called Twitch. It's not Channel Twitch, see? It's called Twitch Routed. That was right. So let's add details again. So it was a view. There it is.
And this one goes inside of my widget delete details. Okay. That goes points to my widget details, which is up here. And instead of this, and we don't need this back to list. And that's fine. But that's from a Twitch routed, so this thing needs to go and select this and move this up to details. Okay, we also need to do the same for delete. So this is gonna be called delete two. We're gonna add this new view in here called delete, delete, Twitch routed. I need a new chair, huh? This thing is just so creaky. So here under my delete now, same thing, we want this. When I look up here at my delete, Twitch user select here. This is under Twitch routed. So let's bring this down up here. And we want to get rid of this. Like that. And you want to get rid of this Twitch user, right? Like that. Interesting. So it wants this to be for, is this like a loop or something? So we also could put in an ID there, but I don't think we need that. I think we just need the username, right? I guess it wouldn't hurt to put in the provider name. And let's move this below that. I don't think we need ID or the OAuth token. Well, we're on delete, so we don't need that. Like there, okay? And then we have a submit. And then we want to bring this stuff up to delete. Like that. And this is also using Twitch routed. Under our create, we had Twitch user view model. This is a Twitch routed view model, right? Same thing here under my edit and my delete. This is a, this is totally wrong. Twitch routed view model.
That's right. And this create, and then this create. I don't have it anymore, huh? That's interesting. We'll have to double check that. Details here. Details up here has my Twitch user, Twitch routed view model. So details, we don't care about a timestamp. I do care about a provider name. I do care about a Twitch username. And then we don't want to see these. Do you have a delete in here somewhere? Back to list. Let's give those a try and see what happens. I wonder if you will ever release a Smart Admin version 2.0. I see releases coming out all the time. I mean, even my regular job is looking at them now. It's really nice. Ugh. So now when we come in here and we look at our pro, uh, Twitch. And if you look here at your details under your alley chat, it tells me that this is looking for an in ID of my MVC Twitch an optional must be provided. So here under my details, controller. Details, ah. And now here you need to actually get this. And we wanna get a Twitch routed, right? Oh no, it's just Twitch user. ID dot two string, and then this is going to be a resource, right? And this will be a task. And that needs those, right? And then if I come back and I look at my details, Twitch routed, perfect. View model. Crap. This is insane. Twitch routed view model. Twitch routed view model. And then back over here. Twitch account is a Twitch routed response. If my Twitch account dot response code is equal to integer of my HTTP status code dot okay. Otherwise, we want to turn to my uh, redirect to action called my index. 
and we want to say uh, view bag dot message equals could not locate that record. And this is a response dot twitch routed. Perfect. Let's run that. Is it building or what's happening here? Yes. <sighs> Take long enough. All right, and then we need to get the web API running and then also the identity server running. Okay, here it is. If we come in here. All right, Serializer, see you tomorrow. Thanks, Jacobs. This is a bloody light strike keyboard, I think is what it's called. And now if we looked at details for it, it says object is not sent to a reference. So what happened here? Okay, it got that, it got that. Provider Twitch routed ID. If I look back over here at my controllers for that under my Twitch. This wants to go to Alley Chat, Twitch routed. Get routed's Twitch. Get routed Twitch. ID. And then also this thing, I did think I needed to put a prefix. Oh no, this is a partial alley chat Twitch controller, which has this prefix and this one should also be this. Okay. Let's run it. <laughs> Jacob says, bye serializer. Appreciate that Jacobs. That's, uh, that's in the spirit of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring the RSS feeds together. So that that's awesome. I appreciate that. I'll see you tomorrow, Serializer. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and run the resource and then also the identity. Looks like it never started this one. Okay, here it is. And now when we look at details, perfect. Response code is 400, so bad request. Thank you, Wizard1979. Thank you for that follow. If you have any questions, please pop them in this channel. Check us out, discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. Also, all of our uh, legacy videos are up on YouTube, so let me post a link to that. We don't have a custom link at the moment, but we are getting pretty close. Here you go, sir. If you could give me a follow there, I think we need like 20 or 25 more and then we'll be ready for a custom URL. So it looks like this gave me a bad request. So why would this have given me a bad request? Let's come back and look over here. We could just rerun this over on the web API. I wanna look at my routed and that's fine. We already have a breakpoint. Let's go to details. Twitch routed, FDE95, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let me go check to see what's going on here. So 
So this is a reference to a Twitch user ID, not necessarily a record associated with So this is a provider user routed ID, so you're passing the wrong value here. So in your controller. Get routed Twitch, which one are you sending over here? When you click on a, so it's in your view here for Ali Chat. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's not, it's this one. It's in your areas under your views here. You wanna look for your index. It's where you're clicking on this. Where's your JavaScript in here? I guess you don't have any, huh? So it's in here where you're clicking on one. Details. Oh, I know, there's one in the side that I can look at as a reference. That's here under my views, my shared, and then it's called the side. Area with a capital A. Probably also want to do the same thing here, right? So that means that this thing is passing the wrong one. This needs to be a routed, Twitch routed view model, right? And this is a index. The difference here is that Twitch users encapsulated and it includes a number of channels. So if I look back up here at my widget, Now you can see I should have my Twitch ID, Twitch user. Like that. Even though it doesn't look like that's correct, that is. Don't you also need to have a header in here? Yeah. And now it should be passing the right one. But I need to check my controller because where this is pulling here, this needs to be my get twitch routed asynchronous from this router ID and then also a routed async just like that. So if my users dot response code is equal to integer of my HTTP status code dot okay, then you are going to return this. Else you want to return a uh, redirect to action called index of your home controller in your area. No, but if it can't find any, oh no, but that would be that it has that error code, the Just a little error code, okay? Let's try that again.
How are you guys doing out there tonight? Or this morning? Run that one, and then also we need to run my identity. That one ran the identity, so it still hasn't run this one. Uh, negative, this is Visual Studio. How are you doing the exit test? How are you doing? I like that name. Welcome to the channel. If you have any questions, please pop them in. We also are up on YouTube if you want to go back and review any of the former videos before where we started. Okay, so this worked. This is great. This is what we were hoping for. This is wrong, so we got to fix that. And then also when we look at details, it says that it has an ID null as a reference type. Okay. So it's never even passing here because when it's hitting my... In here in my, um, not that one, sorry, my um, um, MVC, we wanna look all the way over here at my index. When I was clicking on one of these, it said, item ID here is null. When I click on edit, when I click on details. Do I have to do it like, Hmm. So how do I, how do I do an action link with an area and a parameter? C sharp ASP.net. Well, I just joined to learn some languages. Hey, Solanus, welcome. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Early in the morning for me. Uh, well, I just joined to learn some languages. Right now, I'm going to learn CSS, PHP, JavaScript for school, and my future job, I hope. Uh, so PHP and ASP.NET are fairly similar. They're both back-end languages. I am using some JavaScript, CSS, and HTML in here, as well as Action, uh, or I'm sorry, as long as some, as well as some Razor, which is ASP.NET MVC's uh, view engine, which is made up mostly of HTML, plus some helpers. At the moment, removing dump data from my hard drives and reinstalling system about one. Oh, that's a lot of data, man. I still don't see area. Area controller. New area null. It wants this. So it wants me to make sure that I put in here my HTML attributes like that, right? Stupid. Let's try it again. That worked great. Stupid. Oh, it didn't. Uh, let me try rerunning this real quick. This is a little funny what just happened there, huh? MVC, we'll run that. Anyway, watching streams like this is going to give me some experience on how it looks, and I know some of the basics of C++. If you want to go back and check any of the previous videos, let me give you the link to that. I don't have a custom link yet. I still need a few more follows on YouTube. Just started going up on YouTube, but there are no... Um, there are no uh, music, so it's not muted at all. And then I'm always here. Also, we're on Discord at discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. That's the other main way that we all stay in communication. Okay, we also need to make sure that my resource is running and then the identity.
Here we go. Looks cool. All right. Parameter contains a null alley chat twitch ID of system good for type. So let me go back here. I wonder if this thing's going to make me do it like this. We'll do this as a string ID equals this. So that way it's a nullable good good if my good dot try parse of my um, ID and it's going to be an out good then you want to do this try it again You know what it might be is that you're actually not having one for that record because you never created one when you... So look here in your PHS MVC, when you're coming back in your controller to this auth callback and you're doing this create. Create Twitch user routed. So this needs to be a response, right? If my call that create response. So now if my create response dot status code response code, sorry, is equal to my integer type of my HTTP status code for OK, then what you want to do is you want to return redirect to action. And it's going to be my index of my Twitch in that new area equals my alley chat. Okay. That's fine. And so here, if in fact we are not able to retrieve this record, I wonder what it is when we hit here. I wonder what this response code is. When I look back at the web API, you're doing this create, create routed Twitch, right? When you look back at your, I want to pull this one over here for a second and I want to look at my callback controller. Here you're calling create, create Twitch routed. So that is correct. So then down in the web API where you're doing your routed, create routed Twitch. And here, when you're actually creating this, you create the new bot. If it doesn't exist, you make sure that provider exists. And then you send it back. So let's start here. Okay. And then also the MVC. Oops, that's never going to work because I didn't start the MVC first. Try that again. It's the MVC. And then also my resource and then my identity. One, two, oops, do we have the identity running twice? It looks like the identity is running twice. I gotta be a little slower when my start.
And then also you want to add your resource there and your identity. Here we go. That one's fine. Huh. Oh, there's a bunch of these. Here we go. When you're looking at this one, and you're looking at the index, it's a Twitch routed view model, so that is fine. Okay, when we clicked on that, it's not giving me my attribute again. When I look at my Twitch routed view model, does this thing even have an ID associated with it? It absolutely should. There's no way it couldn't. Okay, so when this thing is being sent in my Twitch routed, in my MVC, This one. Uh, what was the first programming language? Probably VBA back when I was like in fifth grade. Visual Basic, I think it was, and Access. Access is a great one to get started with if you, if you want to do big data in the end because it kind of makes you see the whole picture and you get like a nice um, data-driven perspective on the whole thing. Juice box. So this one, I want to check to see when you return this routed Twitch, we absolutely should be returning something that has an ID. So this, when this is returning, when you click on this and you're returning this model here, I wonder if you have to put it like this and just let it just let it ride. Don't worry about that. It needs to reload the page prior to be able to doing that. There it is. And it got it. So there, it worked. So now it's giving me a name and also something called a username. So if I come back and I look at what's happening in here. This is a provider name and a username. So let's fix this. And it doesn't have my username established in there, which is fine. So now what I want to look at is a couple of different things. The first one is over here in the web API, why isn't that returning a username? Get Twitch routed, get Twitch routed, create Twitch routed. This one. Hey there, Son Yu Lo Han Mi. Welcome to the channel. How are you? VBA is sort of scripting of all the office stuff. I started VBA and Excel. 
Oh, yeah, I did VBA a lot too. So that way you can do uh, automation within Microsoft Office apps. But then I also did a lot of the uh, Visual Basic and Visual Basic for Applications, which is inside of Access, which is really you're kind of trying to set up like a fake application. Uh, what am I working on? I'm working on an ASP.NET uh, MVC application that also has a web API on the back end. This is for my own little uh, Pixel Horror Studios project. Additionally, it has a Windows service which is running um, and it's set up as a message routing service. So we have it currently taking in messages from um, Twitch. You can register accounts onto the website. You use authorization to get into the website, OAuth 2.0. Um, code authorization, and then it will also re-register you with chat tokens if you want it to route. And so we're setting all that up right now so that we get our channels routed correctly. Um, so right now, when I'm looking at this Git provider here, I need to pull this over because I'm pretty sure there's a, a, a token inside of this entity, and there is. Um, and this thing says that it has a bot connected as in here with a username. So it's in the mapping here. It's that this view model also has a Twitch user in here. Pardon me. So when I look at this, this thing needs to have a Twitch user child view model. And when I look at this, this thing's gonna have a base view model on it. And then I also need to make sure I have my Twitch user, which is here. We'll bring this thing in here. Just like that. This needs to be called Twitch username, right? And then also in your provider here. I found your channel in live coding. Hey, thank you, live edu. Yeah, we're over there as well. Oh yeah, I do remember that. You were over in, in uh, live edu and then you popped over here. I do remember that you were one of the first ones who was doing the cross RSS feed. We have another gentleman named Jacobs out there who's been coming in regularly. He might be out there as well. Um, so in this provider view model, you can see that I have this name this needs to be a display provider name and then also in this you're going to need to have a twitch channel child view model and this currently doesn't have anything in it. And the reason for this is that you can't have cascading view models when you use AutoMapper, or we're going to start to have uh, circular reference problems. So up here now, I should be able to, in my initialize AutoMapper, where I have this account view model goes to account, Twitch router goes to Twitch router, Twitch user goes to Twitch user view model, and then also you need to have a Twitch user child view model. And then also you need to have a Twitch channel. And I don't think this ever has a reverse map. And now when you look at this entity, this thing says bot connected as Twitch user. And that should automatically be doing Twitch username goes to username. So let me add that in up here. And we want to look for something that says for member in my current project. I guess an all entire solution. And this is inside data access layer services out of the chat.
which is here. We can bring this down here and we can say, so now for my member in here, which is called my username, I want to map over my Twitch username. And that should probably fix that for me. Let's find out. That's all. <laughs> What's wrong here? Let's just rebuild it. I guess we should also, while this thing is rebuilding here, I can take a look at my delete and just make sure that this is a Twitch routed view model. Twitch account registers. It loads my widget delete, which is up here. Are you sure you want to delete this? It gives me a provider name. It gives me a username. Let's do it this other way then. And then we'll need to add in our channels. view model, Twitch routed view model of my Twitch child view model. This is inside of my data access layer. This is a Twitch routed. This can go away. Let's try it again. Looks like I got a little bit of a problem with my Visual Studio. Just a second. Get this thing back up and running. I got that new microphone coming in, which should help with the sound too. We can either put it up over there or we can put it up over there. And it's a shotgun mic, so it should alleviate some of the typing sound as well as the air conditioner sound. Let's go ahead and run the MVC. We need to load the Web API resource server. And then also our identity server. I should really push some of these out to my IIS. Well, at least the identity server. And now when I come in here and I look at Twitch, Looks like it loaded successfully my Twitch routeds. And there it is. So it took me right into details. That's interesting.
But why did it take me here? Oh, it's not showing me anything. And then back here in the index for MVC, arrays for my view for my Twitch under my index where you have your deletes. Um, that's saying that this is not passing incorrectly my ID, which is over here in my Twitch routed Twitch controller, and it's called here in the delete. This this is a GUI string ID. And so now we're going to say good, uh, good, and we're going to say if my good dot try parse, and it's going to be my ID out good. Then what you want to do is you want to um, bar response equals await the client services dot alley chat get twitch routed async of my good and then my resource API URL. And so now if my response dot response code is equal to um, an integer of my HTTP status code, okay. Then what you want to do is you want to um, return a view of your response dot. This needs to be a um, async task, right? Interesting. So it looks like that I have these things already coming in and passed over as a string. So this thing needs to be returning my Twitch router. And then here, this is your delete logic. So you need to do the same thing where you're gonna be getting this good. Sorry, it's a string. And this also needs to be validating my anti-forgery token. And so now what we want to do is var response is equal to await my client services alley chat dot delete. If I look here at this, This is going to be a bool. It's going to be called a delete routed. Sorry, it's a Twitch routed delete request. So this is just going to be a string of an ID and then this string resource server you create. This is going to be a delete. So down in the controller, we can just reference that now. Delete Twitch, and this is going to be an ID and your resource server API URL. If my response dot response code, this is going to be a uh, task, an asynchronous task of an action result. So if this response dot response code, oh, if success. So if this is a success, then what you want to do is you want to return to that. And we're going to say view bag dot message equals record successfully deleted. Otherwise, you're going to return view. So I return this redirect. Uh, no, we could just do a return view. This could actually be that whole thing, which is a Twitch routed view model. So this could be just a view model dot ID. Return view of my view model, right? And now this one's gonna say, um, view bag dot message equals record could not be deleted. And then 
you just do a return view of my view model. That's the delete. This is the create callback. Interesting. Interesting choices. Because the create is just uh, redirecting you. And then details is here. Uh, you see how you have this two string, so you can remove that and you can remove all of this stuff. Let's try it again. Um, I have a problem where I didn't implement this interface. So that would be delete Twitch routed async, which is just gonna be passing in this string called my ID, if I remember correctly. It needs to be returning a bool. You don't need to have a request. This is just going to be a delete. It's just going to be a Twitch routed response. I think you have a delete response, right? And you're going to be passing over a base URL. And then also this endpoint, which is going to be a ID is equal to zero of your ID. And that comes from string.format. If my response dot response code is equal to my integer of my HTTP status code of OK, then you want to return true. Otherwise, you want to return false. Now, when you look at this, LE chat response, we got to look at the um, web API controller and look at this one. And we want to look at the deleted provider routed ID. So we should change this to be ID. Looks good. Let's go ahead and run it. We have to run the MDC, we have to run the web API and the identity server. Crap. It says that something does not implement something, which is not accurate. It's clean. I'm going to rebuild it. Looks like I got another little bug happening here. So let's go ahead and stop the build, close the project, and then reopen it. Hmm. 
Let's go ahead and rebuild this whole thing. While this works, I'm going to get another cup of coffee. A sec. Okay, I'm back. Um, so it looks like everything rebuilt. So now we can go ahead and launch. This is the MVC. Then we need to do the web API and the identity server. Interesting, let's try it again. One. Two. Three. They all should be going now. Here we go. Over to Twitch. It successfully kicks me through. It says you got it. Here are my two records. So now if I click on details, it's going to get the user. It says okay. And it's returning successfully. And now when I look at it, it tells me okay. And now if I want to go back to the list, that works fine. Username is still not coming in correctly. So let's take a look why when I am grabbing over in the web API right now. Here. So let me see what happens when this mapped. This did not map a Twitch user. It only mapped the entity, but there is a Twitch user in here. Oh, it's called bot connected as. So I think here you need to say when you're doing your Twitch routed view model to your from your Twitch routed to your Twitch routed view model. You're gonna do a, and I don't know if this is gonna even be worth it, so we'll do a four member V. We'll just copy this. And this one should be a, um, why is this unhappy with me? This one is supposed to be a, hmm, really doesn't want to, bot connected as Twitch user. Hmm. 
Then we'll do a reverse map, and then we need to do this one the reverse way as well. Let's see if that fixed it. Okay, that's the MVC. This is the resource. And also the identity. Okay, let's see. We're in the routed, so we're in the web API. You can see when it kicks through. Let me see what my response looks like now. And now it is in fact bringing in my user. So good call. There it is. And now when we look at details, it should be good to go. If I go to delete, is it gonna actually work? Are you sure you wanna delete this? Let's go ahead and delete it. Now it didn't work because I didn't delete it, right? When I look at the code itself for what's happening in my delete, it's pretty close. Is it hitting here? It is, and my ID is coming in. So if it is, in fact, null, if it is not null or white space, <laughs> wow, all right. try that and that should fix our MVC on this one and then we can start to add in our channels I wonder if our delete is working too or our edit we'll worry about edit in a little bit What do you mean it can't be used for writing? It's already being written. Hmm, interesting. You learn something new. Okay. So edit's probably going to fail right now, right? Let's just double check that. Sweet. That's fine, because we all we want is details and delete right now. I wonder what this little symbol is all about. Well, this thing's interesting, so if I go back to the list, it's interesting that the formatting is screwed up. Is it also on the delete? It's not. So if I looked back here at the index and I look at the areas under Ali Chat, under my views, under my Twitch, and I look at the details, and then I look at the index. I'm looking for differences with why this is not spanning correctly. Which it could row HTML, HTTP. Content, content, row, alley, chat. Same locations. Okay, and now let's look inside of my index here. Move this over here. And then let's look at my index here and my um, details here. Sorry, it's the details here and the details there. So the difference is right here. That should fix that.
And it does. Let's delete it and delete it. Did it work? Looks good. And it deleted it. So now we can delete that one. Perfect. And then I can create and it'll ask me if I authorize it. It will authorize me, bring me in, create my routed Twitch. And life is good. Here we are. And so now what we need to do is we need to add in channels. So let's do that. If I look down here at my modules for my libraries under Ali chat, this one, and I look at my view model, you can see that under my routed, I have these things called Twitch channel. So actually let's look at the domain model, make more sense. You can see I have this Twitch routed channel Twitch, which is a connector class, which involves a channel and then also a provider. So we need to input a channel here. Um, and a channel only has a, looks like that it has a base class, but it involves just a few properties. So if I look down at my Twitch channel view model, you can see that this has a type and a value. These are wrong. This is an enumerator now. No, we don't even have this. Well, the only thing that we really need is the channel name. Is that correct? Probably. And so that means that actually up here on my Twitch channel, under my base channel, we can probably get rid of these two. No, we want those two. That's fine. But on my view model, we don't need them. We also don't need this list of users. So let me go back then. Instead of breaking everything, let's make a new one of these. And we're going to say a new view model. And we're going to say a Twitch channel create view model. And the only two things, few things I want in here are my uh, channel name. So now what I should be able to do is come into the um, data access layer. Well, that's fine. We, we care. We, we like that stuff. Okay. So then I want to come to the data access layer and I want to look here at my, we currently have in my context, we should have something in here called channels, Twitch and Twitch routed channel, Twitch routed channels. Perfect. So that means that here we should have my Twitch channels and we do, and we have my Twitch routed channel Twitch. That's fine. Cause you want to bring that in. So we're going to say channels, Twitch, routed channels. Sorry, just changing some of the names. And then we also want to make sure that I added another one of these things here for my Twitch routed channel, whatever, whatever. Make sure that you add this to the 
Is there an interface on this one? There is. So we'll add it right here. That's good. And now we need to come over into the services layer and we want to add in a right here. We want to add in the first one here, which is going to be called a create Twitch routed channel. And you should have in your library something here called a request for a Twitch channel create request. And this thing should be a base request. And I think the only thing that we're requesting on this would be a username. And then also a, um, no, it's gonna be a um, Twitch routed ID, sorry. And then also a um, string for my channel name. So this is a Twitch channel create request. We need to call it a Twitch routed channel request. And it's going to be passing back this view model. So we're going to be passing in this. The first thing you want to do is you want to ignore all of this stuff and you want to var Twitch routed equals await my client services. So that's called my data access layer, which is called my unit of work. This one is going to be my Twitch routed. Get by ID async so here you're going to do a good good if my good dot try parse of my request dot twitch routed ID is my out good then what you want to do is get that by ID, which is called good. If my Twitch router is not equal to null, then what you want to do is, now you want to check to see if for your channel. So you want to do var channel equals await my union of work dot Twitch channels. Channels Twitch, which should be called Twitch channels dot and you want to do your git async s where my s dot channel name dot to string sorry dot trim dot to lower is equal to my request dot channel name dot dot trim dot to lower so you're going to try to get it here and if you can't, then you gotta make it, right? So if my channel is null, then what you wanna do is you wanna add a new one. So it's gonna be channel equals a new Single or default. So otherwise you want to make a new Twitch channel here where your name is going to be equal to my name. I'm sorry, it's my uh, request dot channel name. My type and my type value is going to be equal to. Now you need constants in here. So this goes in your
library, you need to have a new folder in here called constants. Uh, and Newtons, I'm sorry. In this Twitch channel, you can actually scrap these two. No harm, no foul. Channel ID, that comes from Twitch. And then that would be all we need. So now we need to see a check to see if the channel exists. So when I looked back here in my MVC controller, when you were doing your call back here, here. So you can just call this, I think. In your startup here, under your bootstrapper, I do not see where you are creating this. So let's look for this in my current project. How are you loading this? So if I looked at my Twitch lib dot Twitch API dot, and I should have something in here called like configuration or something, credentials. Let me pull up the documentation. Settings. It's starting in my data access services alley chat. That's fine. So that means that here you can just call it. And I think we want to look for channels. And we'll look for V5. Get channel by gets a channel object based on a specified OAuth token. So I don't like that I have to do it by ID, and I don't like that I have to do it by asynchronous because get channel is privileged. There must be a way to Twitch API check if a channel exists. So let's look at my V5 API for Twitch.
So I think we want Twitch API GitHub. Come on. There we go. It gets information about active streams. Authentication. All right, so I think if we just did it a little cheesily, get channel by name, and we could just do a channel. It's a request dot channel name dot trim dot two string. I'm sorry, uh, this needs to be too lower. This returns a Twitch channel. And now I should be able to create this using my Twitch channel here. If my Twitch channel does not equal the null, then you want to return this. And then you want to do your unit of work dot twitch channels dot insert this twitch channel. Sorry, it's just called the channel. Finally, we should be able to say twitch routed dot channels dot add new one of these things, which is a connector class, which would be my channel twitch, which is my channel. And then my provider router, which is my Twitch router. And that's it. And then you want to do a unit of work dot Twitch routed dot edit dot update and you should be able to pass in your twitch router and then do a if my unit of work dot we're going to await on it my unit of work dot save changes then you want to return my twitch router otherwise you want to that. Otherwise, you just want to return an all, right? What's the problem here? Oh, that was just for create. The next one here is to get Twitch routed. Well, you already know how to get that. You know how to get that. You're only gonna have a create and a delete for this, right? Twitch routed channel async. So on this one, you wanna do a Twitch routed provider async. So this one's gonna be called a uh, Twitch routed ID, and then also you want to do a um, Twitch channel ID. Like that. So now if this is not null, 
then what you want to do is in your entity, you want to look for your channels. Where my S is equal to my Twitch channel ID. Then if this channel is not equal to null, then what you want to do is you want to delete it. Twitch routed channel Twitch routed channel Twitch and then you're gonna save that. Let's go ahead and bring these up into the interface. Like that. And then like that. Twitch routed channel Twitch. This one is inside of my callback. That should do it. Let's go ahead and rebuild. Now we need to add this to the web API, right? So here we want to do a post and a delete. And we're going to say create routed Twitch channel. It's just going to be this routed response and our create is going to be a oops. like that. We have a current time, we have this, if our model is not valid, this needs to be required, as does this one. Then you're gonna do a bad request. Otherwise, what you wanna do is you want to create Twitch routed channel async and you're gonna pass in this request. And that's that one. And then you also need to have this delete. Like that. Current time response. If this string is not equal to null, then you'll do a bad request. You'll get a good out of it. And then you're going to delete Twitch response channel. And this one wants to get my GUID routed ID.
this one wants those two IDs, the routed and the Twitch, but you could theoretically just do it from that one record ID, right? Twitch routed channel ID. like that. Okay. Okay. This thing is a GUID, it's passing in the GUID here and it's all this one is saying is that it already defines a delete routed Twitch so it needs to be this one. Delete. There's our back end. Let's go ahead and rebuild it. Everything looks good. So now we can come up to the MVC and we can scaffold out the views. So if we look in the areas under our Twitch controller, this thing is actually all screwed up now, right? We need to rename this. And this should be called Twitch Routed Controller, right? We still haven't done our edits in here. Okay. We need to have a create. So let's do a We're going to add a new controller in here and we'll make it a scaffolded item with read write actions. Hey there, live EU Bob. How are you doing today? Thank you for that follow. Oh, that must be a new thing that you guys put in there, huh? That's great. And this one we want to say that this is my Twitch routed channels controller. And so to save some time, we can open this up. Look in Ali chat, look in my views, look in my Twitch routed viewing controllers. We get to come in here, take these ones and just dump them in. Let's go ahead and import those. So the most important thing to remember is that here in index, this thing is going to be having a uh, list of Twitch channel view model. 
No. Twitch channel child view model, right? Because this Twitch channel view model has the same things as what's in my domain under channel. Just like that. Okay. And so now in this thing, this one is just going to have this Twitch accounts registered. And uh, this is a whole widget that I currently have. So this is wrong. This just needs to be a partial. Is that correct? So up here, let's create a partial. For my Well, we could do this in my Twitch routed. We're going to create a new view here and we're going to say that this is going to be a partial for my channel. And it will be that enumerator of these things, right? Now, because this is a partial, you actually don't need very much of this stuff. And when we look here under my, probably delete this and this one. And so now when I look here under my index and it looks like this right except for this one is going to be a channel name Now there's another problem here, which is that this view model that you created, Twitch channel child, this needs to be a routed. Oh no, this needs to go back to me the other way. But you need to have one in here called a Twitch channel routed child view model. And this thing has this. Like that. It has a public, it has a base view model on this. And then this also needs to have a good or a string which connects it to a Twitch routed ID. that and like that. So back up here under my routed controller then when you're looking at details. Which is here.
right here you could have another at HTML dot render partial and the parcel that you're rendering is called channel. It's actually called channels with an S. And you need to be passing in something from your model here. which you're calling channels, except for that this Twitch routed view model, oops, not this one, has this list of Twitch channel routed child view model. So let's see what that looks like when we run it. We also want to make sure we have our web API resource running and then also our identity server. Take a look. Tells me the resource can't be found. Alleychat.twitch because it's called Twitch routed. So now if I looked at details on this, it tells me that it needed a semicolon on that view. That's an easy fix. It's on the details, I'm sorry. Here. We'll rerun it. You can see that it's here and we don't currently have any channels. So we need to have it so that I can create one. And I think that that is where we're gonna leave for today. So tomorrow what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up and we're gonna make it so that we can actually use kind of the front end that we set up that we can add channels to this so that we can see where they're routing and then also where they're routed to. Um, so if you haven't, uh, click the follow, please. Make sure you check us out um, at uh, YouTube because all of these videos are up on YouTube now from the very first one up until today. Um, and they also don't have um, sound. So or, I'm sorry, they don't have music. So that way you can check them out. There's the link there. Make sure you click the follow here on Twitch. Also, I'm a part of Andy Dev here on twitch.tv, and there's a lot of great content coming out of there. We'll be back tomorrow at 6 in the morning. 5.30 is what I shoot for between 5.30 and 6, and we'll be going until about 8, Pacific Standard Time. Until tomorrow, guys, have a good uh, morning.